Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to solve an application of a differential equation using related rates. Um, in this example, basically uses application shows where related rates and differential equations can be used and used to solve problems. So this um, example that I've gotten here, I've taken from a math specialist book in the Australian curriculum units um, three and four. So I'll just read you the question now. An inverted cone with a height of h has and a radius of length r centimeters is being filled with water, which is flowing from a tap at k liters per minute. The depth of water in the cone is x centimeters at, at time t minutes. Construct the differential equation for dx dt and solve it given that initially the cone is empty. Right. So the way I want to start this of how to solve this equation is I want to draw a picture of what's actually going on. So we have a cone, right? It's, we've been told it's got a height of h centimeters and a radius of r centimeters. And there's like a tap here. It's a really bad tap. And water's going into it. So this is my water. It's going in at a certain rate that we've been given. So we've been given it's going in at a rate of k liters a minute. Now just by looking at that we know that we've been given dv over dt equals k liters a minute. Forgive me if I spell minute wrong. Now, just before we move on to the actual question, I'm going to change this entire thing its units because the rest of the question is in centimeters. So we, one liter is the same as centimeters cubed. So I'm going to change it from dv dt is the same as 1000 k centimeters cubed a minute. Cool. Now that we have that defined, let's continue constructing the rest of the question. So this is what we've been given at the start. We've been given a rate at which water is going into the thing. So the cone has a depth of water of a height of x centimeters at time t. So this means that we've basically been given an arbitrary height for the water at any given time. So like a variable of the height. So at time t, the water has a height of x centimeters. And we're asked to find dx dt. Now related rates uses basically chain rule to cancel our variables. So dx dt, we know we're going to use our dv dt over here. So dx, d, dx over dt is the same as dv dt multiplied by dx dv because if this works out oh oh dv because if this works out we can cancel our dvs so we need to find basically an expression for dx dv now recall the volume of a cone is a third pi h squared r so that's the volume of a cone now, they haven't really explicitly said, but over here, our, our radius at time t is going to be changing because it can get bigger the more water is filled and it can get smaller the less water is in it. So, we're gonna, I'm going to make an expression for the volume of the cone at time t. So, I'm going to say when the, when, um, the water has a, a height of x centimeters, it has a radius of y. So I'm going to define y as the radius of the water in the cone at time t. So y is a variable because the radius at time t is always going to be changing. So that's what I'm defining y as pretty much. So I'm going to say y is going to be our radius in here, y centimeters. Because you agree, if we pour water into a cone, the radius is going to keep changing, depends how, 
if it, if it gets filled up, the radius will be increasing. If, let's say if it was a different question, if it was leaking, the radius would be decreasing. So our radius at time t is a variable. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation here as the volume at time t. So I'm going to say volume is a third pi x squared, so x is our height at time t, and r is y, which is our radius at time t. So that's our equation. Now, y and x are both variables that are both changing. So if we, we can't really differentiate this now because we've got two things that are changing. However, we, there's a trick we can use. Since this is a cone, we can basically take similar triangles. So I'm just going to draw out basically a slice of the cone that we have here pretty much. So basically got two similar triangles hidden within this cone. So this is our y and our x. And we also have our h and our r up here. Right, using similar triangles, y over x is the same as r over h. Oh, the ratios are the same. This is lovely because r and h are constants. So if we can get this entire thing in terms of y, we can put that in there, and then we can define dv over dx. This is fantastic. So we're just going to multiply each side by x. So we have y equals rxh. So this is our equation 1, and this is our equation 2. 1 into 2. So our volume is now a third pi... Oh, I've written, whoopsie daisy, I've, I've written um, the equation wrong for the volume of a cone. This is incorrect. The height isn't squared, the radius is squared. So therefore that's not squared, this is squared. I nearly stuffed up the whole question. So x, and then we're going to put r of x over y all squared, so therefore volume is a third pi x cubed r squared h squared. Hope we're happy with that. I'm going to rub some of this off now so we have more room for the question. So I'm going to get rid of that. Sorry about the mistake with the volume thingy over here. I fixed it up now. Um, yep, going to get rid of that now. Move this up here. Now, we want to find dx over dv. If we differentiate this equation here, we'll get dv, dv over dx. And if we just flip it and get the reciprocal, we'll get dx over dv. So let's go dv dx is the differential with respect to x of a third pi x cubed r squared over h squared. Right, r, h, pi, what are they? Constants. So they don't affect anything. So we just ignore those and only differentiate with respect to x. So we have dv dx is equal to pi x squared r squared over h squared. Therefore, dx dv is h squared over pi x squared r squared. Right, so I'm going to rub out all this now that we have the thing we want. Move this up here. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Move that up there. All right. We have everything we need to find dx. So dx dt is equal to 1000k one, 1, multiplied by h squared pi x squared r squared. 
simplifying that, we get this. Boom, chakalaka. Right, we've done the first part of the question. We've constructed a differential equation of the thing we wanted. We've found the equation for dx dt. Now we've got to do the second part. We have our equation that we've gotten. Now we need to solve it because we've been given initial conditions. So initially the cone is empty. The word initially means t equals zero. And empty means volume, so volume equals zero. So when t equals zero, the volume is zero. Right. So if the volume is zero, that means x height must also be equal to zero. So that whole thing needs to be virtually gone. So that whole thing needs to be empty. So it needs to be zero centimeters. So it's empty. Right. So using that information, we just got to... We've got to integrate this with respect to x, so we need to flip this upside down and go dt dx is the same as pi x squared r squared. Whoops, sorry, my computer is lagging. Whoops, squared over 1000 pi h squared. t equals the integral of pi x squared r squared over 1000 k h squared with respect to x. So this, we can take out the constants out the front door because they won't affect everything. So we can rewrite this integral as t equals pi r squared over 1000 k h squared over the integral of whoops, x squared, x squared, dx. Integrating that, we get pi r squared, 1000 k h squared, the same as 3, plus c. Right, so to find this plus c value, we need to sub in our initial condition. So we said, initially it's empty, so when t equals 0, volume equals zero, which implies that x equals zero. So therefore, zero equals pi r squared 1000 k h squared times, oh, times, oops. I'm sorry, my computer's lagging again. Oops, sorry guys. So I'm just going to sub in zero, zero for my x once my computer stops lagging. Oops. Cool. So we go zero, three, plus c. Therefore, r c will be equal to zero. If it loads, sorry. Zero. Hence, our equation, we can rearrange our equation once, sorry, my computer is doing a lot of stuff. So since our c value is zero, Basically, once we integrate that, there's no constant because our c value is zero. So now we want this whole thing in terms of x as a function of time. So we'll go t multiplied by 1000 k h squared times 3 over pi r squared equals x cubed, and then you can cube root that. But that is the solution, pretty much. Alright, thank you for watching. Uh, yep, thank you.